the day has come. After five years of trying, the Sudden Storks team has secured a spot chasing one of New Zealand's premier game species, the Orland Wapiti. On this trip, I'm joined by hunting almanac Chris Hunt, and you guessed it, old mate Richie Pierce. Just been into the Tiano Press Choice with Chris, and I've got Richard's favourite brew. Just let him know. Oh, nah, nah, <laughs> nah. You love it. Nah. <laughs> Just arrived at the bottom of the natives, been uh, dropped off by southern helicopters, <coughs> choking up sand flies. Rich is just uh, checking out a bit of sign on the clearing, but um, and, and Chris is getting ready. We're heading up up there, and we're going to head around to the true right uh, up towards the Bernard Burn, set up camp, and then we might drop kit and then head up this ridge up behind us. Uh, and get established on the tops. So there's a lot of rain coming Thursday, so um, we might have to hunker down for a day and then we'll hit our window after that. See you on the trip. <laughs> country. Check that out. Bloody awesome. After a bit of a long, steady walk up into the Bernard Burn catchment, um, just waiting for um, Chris and Rich to cross a bit deep over here. My legs are longer, so they're going to come in across here. We're just standing the Bernard Burn stream here, and over here is is the Bernard Burn proper. So we're going to sneak in there just see if we can see something sitting there early evening. So Hamish, um, what's for dinner? We'll start the trip with the bang Richie, Mexican chicken. It'll be your tent buddy too. <laughs> <laughs> what you have for follow through now? <laughs> Morning, uh, day two. We're getting what we paid for, Jordan weather. Um, just having some breakfast, we've got to pack up. There's Rich, we've got to pack up all that stuff. 
just we're getting there. We're getting there, Chris. And then we're going to head across the the Bernard Burns uh, River, across the other side, and look for a, um, a pretty solid camp because we've got some really foul weather coming in the next day and a half. Um, so we'll we'll hold up there, and then we'll probably try and head up. I don't know if you can see it up the tops if we can because um, we're not hearing any roaring so we might have to get do some glassing the rain has arrived it is starting to piss down it's going to get worse tomorrow this is our marginal camp the bivouac over there Rich and I are going to wet, wet, wet no deer, heard no deer, seen no deer, seen lots of, lots of, lots of, no cares Rich, no cares. Uh, our camp's somewhere over there that, where Chris is all holed up, uh, blazed the track, but yeah, we'd as Rich and I, eh? found this bloody mean little bivouac, laid all our gear out, we're going to leave our gear here and just take what we need to the tent, this is our kitchen, and uh, a little bit of a, a view off the porch. You see the rain coming yeah. down in sheep. We're going to do 12 hours here, Rich. Yep. Yeah. Weather's no good for the next at least 12 hours, so this will be us tomorrow. Oh, this is us for <laughs> how long? It's uh, lunchtime uh, Friday. Friday, and it's now Wednesday night. <laughs> it's going to be 100 mils a day. You're right over there. 200 mils on Thursday. 200 mils. You're right over there, Chris. Oh, there go oh the, there's the lights. There go the lights. <laughs> uh, we'll see you on Friday if we survive. <laughs> uh, day three, end of day three today. And uh, Chris and Richie and I have spent most of the day in our, in our rock bivy, eating and practicing bugling for no answer. But just before recording this, the blue skies come out. So tomorrow um, we're going to head up, up the tops, up behind us, and actually do some hunting, which will be awesome. It is day four today, start of day four, and today we leave our rock bivet, just having some brekkie of rich, and we head up to the tops, which you might see somewhere up there is the tops, and we've got to go up the ridge there, all the way up there, and we might actually be able to start grassing for some animals, do some hunting, because there's no roaring. Um, no noise, plenty of sign, um, but we're going to need a tail on the site to see them because we're, we're not hearing anything with obviously the tail end of the roar, so, or the bugle. Um, so yep, quick feed, um, pull the fly and the tents down and 500 metres, 400 metres? 500 metre climb. 500 metre climb um, to hit the bush line. So camping spot that saw us through the storm. Sun's out. Blue sky, it's looking good on the top, it's mission on. Just having a bit of a late smoker, early lunch. Just been through some really nasty nahiri down there. It's um, tumbled down boulders and things. But he gaps and rocks about four or five metres, you reckon, Rich? Easy. But we've finally broken out. Onto there's a ridge up ahead of us, where Rich is behind us. Never say never. Huh? Never say never. Hope there's no <laughs> more bluffs, but yep, easy to travel to the top, hopefully. 280 metres. Down that's the confluence of the wild natives and the Bernard, um, and then out to sea down there. Up in there is Kiwi Lake. Um, a bit of a cool story about Kiwi Lake. There's a, a famous wobbly hunter called John Muir, and he uh, was up in there, I think, in the 60s. Uh, and he found uh, some bivvyacks, and there's petrified mower in there, human remains, and some adzes. And, um, thinking he was doing the right thing he took an ads back to the museums department and um, they weren't too pleased with them uh, anyway some years later they wanted to get back in there 
you try to give them some coordinates to get back in there to find these bivvacs to find the remains and artifacts um, but they're unable to find it um, we won't get there on the strip but yeah Kiwi Lake up in there uh, here to the natives bloody good spot we're gonna head we're gonna head up up to the high knob up here and do some glassing this evening um, and hopefully we see something it's been bloody quiet and we haven't seen any animals yet Burn of Burn Ridge. Right to turn for camp soon. up on the ridge there um, and they've had a bit of joy um, they looked over into the Bernard Burn Basin and they've uh, seen a, a young uh, bull or stag in there um, uh, a big creamy cow um, and a few other animals um, which I've got some footage of so um, things are looking up on the hunting front um, but we do have uh, at least another day tomorrow Sunday of uh, pretty marginal weather um, but come Monday the sun's coming out again which should give us a good chance to get up there and um, give it a, a serious nudge on the hunting front so we'll look forward to that um, it's late morning day six uh, we're in the tent because it's been bloody raining and windy last night but it started clear this morning Chris has just gotten up and he's found out that the fly has um, pulled one of its tabs and the fly's collapsed over the of the gear but everything's dry thank god um we actually might get a full day's hunting in today i think gonna get out of bed first aren't you? <laughs> yeah it's a bit cold outside when it stops wet. raining eh? Yeah. stop raining it uh, i no. can still hear sprinkles i think yeah so um but anyway the hunting's on the improve um as i said earlier rich and chris saw some animals last night and looking at the footage we think maybe that the the stag or the bull that we saw was um, looked a bit a little, a little bit cautious um, so maybe there's a big bull in there he was worried about as he's approaching those cows so um, fingers crossed fingers crossed there's a bit of cloud moving see him licking his lips mm. Eagle Eye Rich has picked up a bull which is oh, just to your left of centre screen there and just for it, it's on Tarnagan opposite where we are, opposite the Pit River. And for reference, um, he's over there in those three fingers of granite, fair away from where we are. First proper ball of the trip, we can see some timber in frame. Second. Oh, he was a bit reddish looking. I think you're claiming that. That's a stretch. <laughs> oh, and our mates are back again. Oh, two old mates. After fighting off the local care population, we we're up the hill and glassing the Bernard Burn Basin. Too narrow, eh? Too... Oh, yeah. But yeah, but down to the left there's another one. Another bull, another cow. It's two, two <laughs> See that? Um, you come down that ridge line, and there's a boulder. Yeah, the boulder's got a slip yeah, on it. Yep. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, it's just below that. Okay. We'll try and get onto there.
day six, I think, hey, Chris? Day six. Yeah. Uh, we saw four balls. One's the, we think it's an eight or a ten point one. We can't work out if it's old or young or got potential. We need to get closer to it. The rest were sort of young ones. Uh, seven cows and one yearling. Um, we went right up right up to the highest point at the end of this ridge and along sort of the saddle a little bit, um, sussing things out for the next two days, which are absolutely minter weather-wise. Um, over behind me here, actually there's one ball I forgot about, Richard, he's been torturing us from the other side of the valley, that's the Tarnagan Ridge across there, and there's a really good one across that side that we've been looking at all day, he's hardly moved. Um, that's where the other two guys, Jason and Tom, have gone. So, yeah, they, they might have had a good trip up there. But we'll find out when we see them back at the, at the helicopter. Morena, It's day seven. And Richie, Chris and I are up early to position ourselves for a closer look at the bulls we've seen earlier in the trip. After a final check of the Pauline burn, we change position to look into the Bernard burn and plan our stalk into the location the bulls were last seen. The wapiti that we are interested in are here, hiding behind the spur. After a short steep descent off the ridge, we should have a good approach along this terrace. The wind is awesome and the approach is going really well. Yeah, that's until one of the cows sitting sentry on the ridge spots us and sounds the alarm. There's two. There's one up to the left. At this point our best option is to run to the edge of the spur and poke our nose around the corner. And what do we see? Cows with yearlings at foot. Young spikers and bulls. And this dude with some real funky looking headgear. But not the bulls that we're after. After looking at plenty of animals we head back over to the Pauline burn and make the long way back to camp. Blue bell day this morning, bit of a late start, cold start, a uh, bit foot sore and tired from last night, just having some brekkie. Um, we may actually bail down the ridge tonight, uh, back down onto those clearings in the Bernard Burn and um, do a bit of an evening hunt down there just to break up the trip out to the helipad to, tomorrow. Um, See how the boys on the other side on Tarnagan have got on. Just descended the big hill and this is the, the end of day eight camp. Not a bad effort. Okay, day nine. There's some debate over whether this is a river or a burn. <laughs> there's contention in the camp. Day nine, people are getting getting crabby. Oh is this Big Brother? Is it Big Brother's watching? <laughs> yeah Big Brother. I feel I feel disowned and disenfranchised. What are the housemates un unloved. doing today? Yeah. Huh? One housemate's fucking, oh, I'm not sure he's got his pants on. <laughs> and the other one's fucking rustling that. in this tent. I don't know what he's up to. No you don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's making it wet. <laughs> oh sorry dude. <laughs> yeah. So, so across here is the Bernard Burn River. It's, it's up for debate. We'll check Wikipedia when we get back. Um, last half day of hunting today, at lunchtime we have to pack up and bail out to the helipad, meet the other boys, see how they've done. Um, last night we went across here and um, Eagle Eye Chris, he saw um, three, deer. three deer, one one was a, a, had pretty big tops on it Chris. That, 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 that got me excited. Got him excited um, and then behind that was a young, a, a young bull uh, and a yearling. And the yearling looked massive because we're used to seeing reds. Um, so we got some footage of that, but that was pretty bloody cool. Um, today we're going to go with a bit of a spur up here. We're going to get up in there, see if we can look down on the, the burn. Is it a burn? No, it is if you say it. I'm getting dirty looks. Get uh, it's a clearing. We're going to look down on clearing. the clearing with the deer with. We're going to have a look down, see if we can see anything. It's and then we're going to be marsh. back here at lunch and beat the feet. Chris saw enough of the big bull last night to suggest that he might be a taker. It's worth a shot climbing high above the Bernard Burn to see if we can catch another glimpse of him. But to no avail. With half a day left, it's time to pack up and head back down to the helipad.
confluence of the Pauline Vern and the wild natives in the pit. And these boys nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Helicopter pad. Yes, As a final treat on the way up. We hitch a ride with New Zealand's most experienced helicopter pilot, Sir Richard Hannibal Hayes, knighted for services to search and rescue. Hannibal gives us a running commentary of the Wapiti blocks on the way back to Tiano, spotting several animals for us. He even gives us some free venison so we don't go home empty handed.